Devin White's time is coming to an end with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At least that's what one of us thinks following Todd Bowles' comments at the NFL Scouting Combine. That and more right now on Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> What's up, Bucks Nation, and welcome to today's episode of the Locked On Bucks Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and the 10 Tampa Bay Plus app on your Roku or your Amazon Fire Stick. And we thank you, as always, for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. I am David Harrison. I have usurped James Jarko for hosting duties on today's episode this is going to be the David is Lazy episode. James Jarko, so excited to come to you from Indianapolis. Well, he's not in Indianapolis anymore, but we were in Indianapolis on Wednesday that he did the entire show script. So I'm like, you know what, James? You're going to run this thing. So I'll do the intro. I'll do the ad read. You run this bad boy. I'm just going to sit here and be like, yeah, I'm going to react to James Jarko. Of course, he's the deputy editor of BucksNation.com, part of SB Nation. You can find him on Twitter at jarko underscore Bucks. I am a staff writer for BucksGameDay.com a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. You can find me at dharrison82, although I don't tweet much, so I don't know why you would. Uh, but you can also find our show at Locked on Bucks. Yes, I just told people not to follow me on Twitter. Hey, it is what it is. I'll try to do better, guys. James, Jason Light is excited about Kyle Trask, but he's inviting competition for the starting quarterback job. We're going to dive into how that's going to shake up coming up in a little bit. But first, Todd Bowles may have tipped his hand as how it uh, how he feels about a certain Buccaneers star player. Yeah, uh, so Todd Bowles' defense last year was was somewhat lackluster, right? And uh, a lot of that had to do with injuries, some extenuating circumstances. But when it comes to leadership, Todd Bowles had most of his guys there all year long. And he was asked about who the best defensive player on the team is. And Bowles said, quote, it fluctuates week by week. I don't want to say who it is. It can be anywhere from Vita to Levante to Shaq. It fluctuates. David, who wasn't mentioned there? Leonard Fournette. What defensive player wasn't mentioned there? Devin White was not mentioned. Devin White. But Bowles did talk about Devin White. And he said, quote, Devin takes a lot of heat for some things. Everybody judges the missed tackles, but he makes tackles that I haven't seen linebackers make in 30 years. He can make plays for us. He is still one of our best two players on defense. I have a lot of faith in him. His growth mentally, understanding the system, it's not an easy system, has been outstanding. I think the world of the guy, I think he is a heck of a ball player, and I think this will probably be one of his better seasons. End quote. So, David... Yeah. Bowles is asked about his best defensive player, and he rattles off names that are not Devin White. Then he says Devin White is one of his two best defensive players. Which one is it? Um, I think it's it's both. I, I honestly, I, I honestly do think it's both because if because context is important, right? We were talking about this a little mm -hmm. bit uh, on the scouting combine floor, and I think that when you listen to kind of the whole the totality of De of the Devin White of Todd Bowles' comments, right? He's talking about kind of what can Devin White do? And that stuff is important. Like he can make plays that other NFL linebackers can't make. We've seen it. And we especially during the Super Bowl run, we've seen the get live version of 45, right? But he also doesn't necessarily do a lot of the things you need every linebacker to do. And, and you know, does he take a lot of heat? He does take a lot of heat for that. Yeah. But to be honest, you're a number five overall pick. And you're a number five overall pick at a position that is not a premium position. Like the off-ball linebacker position is getting reduced and reduced and reduced every single season in the National Football League. Ten years from now, you may honestly see a defensive scheme that does not rely on a single true off-ball linebacker to be effective. You may just have some of these big safeties or big nickels that we've been seeing uh, rise up in the National Football League. So, and then, and I always, I always flinch a little bit when a coach, a decision-maker talks about the guy and not in a he's a leader he's a locker room leader he's a locker room guy when a when a coach starts saying i really like the dude that's great if you're a draft prospect that's not so great if you're a veteran because you don't pay guys you like you pay players that you need to win with i think 
honestly more a little bit more than Devin. I think these comments say Levante David is certainly a primary target to come back if the Buccaneers can make the finances work. But the comments on Levante David, I think that you're right in saying those are not the best comments you want to hear from your head coach when you're talking about a young linebacker going into his final year in a contract and he wants to get paid. Mm -hmm. And that's what I go back to. And spoiler alert, I'm the one that thinks Devin White is not coming back. Okay, he's entering his final year. And if this bam, bam, does, bam, bam, bam. if this does the sound end up being one of Devin White's better seasons, like Todd Bowles has predicted, Devin White, five years ago in Indianapolis, where David and I were just standing all day, I literally walked in the door, came downstairs, we started recording an episode. Where we were standing, he said that he wanted to be the first $100 million linebacker. Now, there's already been another one, he, but he wants to get paid. So if if Todd Bowles' premonition that that Devin White is going to have one of his better seasons, so you're talking upper 40% now, uh, yeah, he's going to look for that money. And right now, for the Buccaneers, that money isn't there. Now, they've had formal meetings already with – you know, linebackers, a guy like Drew Sanders, they're they're already showing their interest there in case they don't get Levante David to come back. But now they may have to start planning. Well, we can make the finances work for Levante, but down the line, we have to pay Devin. We have to pay Antoine. We have to pay Tristan. Who's the odd man out? It might be the guy that wants the bag and young man, go get your bag. But I don't think it's going to be with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially when He's a much, much better player. So don't hear what I'm not saying or, yeah, don't hear what I'm not saying. But Devin White kind of at this stage has shades of Quan Alexander. Mm. He makes big splash plays. He's mm. a fan favorite. Mm. You know, everybody loves him, but there are plays that he leaves on the field, plays that make the defense susceptible to big explosions from the opposing offense. David, you and I were talking about how it's been four years. Why can't we cover a wheel route at this point in time? So somebody is going to pay mightily for him. I don't think it's going to be Tampa Bay. Yeah, that's that's going to be rough. It's it's really going to boil down to how does Devin evaluate himself? Obviously, look, this season is massive. I mean, it's a contract year that you say about any player. It doesn't matter how great a player is or isn't, right? But this year is massive. And at the end of the day, Devin White, if 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 he wants that kind of money, he's got to come out and show that he is that guy down in, down out. And look, this isn't just the Locked On Bucks podcast, because I imagine there are some Devin White super fans. And look, we like Devin. We've had Devin on the show. We jump at the chance to have Devin on the show. We love the we love the guy, just like you know Todd Bowles is talking about. But as a player, there are some things that are left to be desired, especially if he truly is looking for the kind of money that he's looking for. He's either got to show beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's worth that money, or He's got to be humble and not take that money because the bot. But the truth of the matter is people who are not in and around the organization, people who are not watching Devin at, like a hawk, like, you know, some of the some of us and uh, other outlets are, they're not going to see all that stuff. And some of these guys have fallen in love with him coming out of LSU and they were saying, we can get the wheel route coverage fixed. We can get the zone depth uh, problems fixed and they're going to pay him. And much, I mean, you talk about Quan Alexander, like a lot of people looked at that Quan Alexander contract and said, that's money that the Buccaneers were never going to pay. People don't realize a lot of that money was not guaranteed. Right. It looked good on paper, but the guarantees were actually very low, which is why when Quan didn't pan out with them, again, there was injury problems there as well. They were able to move on from him so quickly. People were kind of surprised by that because Quan was willing to take less guaranteed money from another team than he would from the Buccaneers. Like a lot of times these guys, they don't feel like, well, I'm not taking, you know, X amount guaranteed from you. I'll take that amount guaranteed from the Niners because at least I'm coming in there and, and with a clean slate. So it's going to be interesting because, you know, Devin certainly draws a crowd. He's a very electric player, and some of the things he does do, like Todd said, not a lot of guys do. Um, but but how what his future is, and I think, like you said, Todd Bowles comments, not really putting him on that pedestal uh, so, so much, um, and some of the guys that they do have to pay to continue to be competitive down the road, like Jason Light said, it is there are some tough decisions coming and i think what you're seeing here is you're getting a day two linebacker drafted by the buccaneers and that day two linebacker could potentially actually be the guy replacing devin white next year not levante david with another potentially day two or even day one linebacker coming in to replace the duo and and help uh, usher in a new era so interesting to see but that's not the only player james 
who's going to have a focus on him coming up in 2023 uh, and not in a good way. That, of course, is coming up next here on the Locked on Bucks podcast. And today's episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast is brought to you by FanDuel because the NBA season is past the midway point, is what he said, uh, heading towards the playoff push, the playoff stretch. And now is your perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers, you get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. And that's bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So you can go big, you can go aggressive, because if you lose, you're going to get bonus bets back to recoup your losses and give you that chance to go big again, or maybe you go a little bit more conservative and try to turn that back into cold, hard cash. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, the same same-game parlay feature that almost won me $3,000 if Miles Sanders would have got a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Oh, well. Don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast first list your first view every single day. Thank you for joining us here on our Wednesday episodes. One player that had a golden opportunity last season and did Nothing with it was Joe Tryon Shoyinka. I know that you like what you saw at a JTS last year, but it wasn't all good. What do we think of this player's future? Well, and, and yeah, I did like a lot of what I saw out of Joe Tryon Shoyinka, and I talked about it on this show quite a few times in in the post game live episodes that he has to learn how to finish. We saw the the ability to, you know get past the offensive line. We saw the ability to put pressure on the quarterback. We did not see the ability for him to close. He's he's not a closer. He wasn't finishing plays. And so both Jason Light and Todd Bowles talked about JTS on Tuesday. Starting with Jason Light, he was asked if this is a big year for Tryon Shoyinka to prove himself. And Jason Light said, quote, yes, it is, but I do think that he will. I know that we are all excited about adding George Edwards to our staff. He did some great work in Dallas last year with their pass rushers. I do think that he has got it in him, and I think he will rise to the occasion. Todd Bowles was asked what he would have said if someone told him that Vita Vea would end up as the team's leading sacker in 2022, and he said, quote, I wouldn't have believed you. This is the first 3-4 team I've been a part of where the outside linebackers have not led the team in sacks. We've got to get better in that area. No disrespect to Vita. I'm glad he did. And we had some good interior rushes with Vita, Nacho, Hicks, and Will, and all those guys. But when Shaq went down, it was kind of a letdown. I thought Nelson did some good things, as did Joe. But from an experience standpoint, just getting back there consistently I think we've got to get better there. So not a whole lot of praise for Tryon Shoyinka, uh, you know, coming from Todd Bowles. There's a lot of potential talk again, uh, and they obviously hope that new outside linebackers coach George Edwards gets the most out of the edge guys. But Tryon Shoyinka has to step up this season. And when you have your head coach, who is also the mastermind of your defense, basically saying that Joe Tryon Shoyinka did a good job of getting experience. It's not exactly a ringing endorsement. Yeah. You know what? Here's, here's where I want to tip a cap to, to Todd Bowles and in his, some of his statements at the scouting combine this week during the season, we had a lot of interactions with Todd Bowles. There were a lot of Mm -hmm. post-game press conferences where it was like, look, we're still in first place. We're still where we want to be. We're still in control of our own playoff destiny. And a lot of people, media fans, everybody were like, dude, you are delusional. I think this is the sign that Todd Bowles is not delusional. I think, you know, and, and perhaps look, if Todd would have said, listen, we're not playing well, but we have who we have. And we got to work with these people. We can't, we can't go draft people. We can't go just steal, you know, ex, you know, Michael Parsons. We can't just fly to Dallas. Like, Michael, get on the plane, come to Florida. Like, we have who we have. So we got to work with who we have and we're doing the best that we can and we're going to continue that. Like that wouldn't have been the cop out that like we're still in first place was right. But I think what Todd was trying to do is 
partially protect his players' egos from public criticism, but you know, also kind of answer the question. Because I mean, he wasn't lying, right? Like they were still in first place, still controlled their playoff. Does so I mean, it wasn't untrue. It was just like, bro, you just barely beat the Andy Dalton led New Orleans Saints on Monday Night Football. That's not a good answer. Um, but now we're hearing the real answers, and we're hearing the the less than emphatic Devin White comments. We're hearing the yeah, JT has got experience. That's great type of comments. This is Todd Bowles kind of showing you that he's aware that there are flaws on this team and that he knows they have to be fixed. And yeah, I love Vita Vea. You love Vita Vea. Vita Vea should never, ever, ever, ever be leading this team in sacks, period. Like, if you ask Andy Reid, Andy, how great is your wide receiver group? And he's he has the ability to say, we're great with who we have. Why? They just won a Super Bowl. But the bottom line is Travis Kelsey was their leading receiver in receptions and yards and touchdowns. When your tight end is leading your entire group in that, you don't have the best skill position players. So just because they got away from it doesn't mean you don't expect to see the Chiefs improve their wide receiver group. So if the Chiefs are going to improve a deficiency in that avenue coming off a championship, then the Buccaneers are sure as heck going to do it coming off of a first-round playoff departure. Yeah, and and again, I, I want to emphasize the fact that I do like a lot of what I've seen out of Joe Tryon Shoyinka, but he had an opportunity when Shaquille Barrett went down to step up and be the guy and be the motor and be you know the player coming off of the edge that was getting pressure thanks to the defensive line led by Vita Vea collapsing the interior of the pocket and forcing the quarterback to have to move around, basically running right into the arms of Joe Tryon Inca, and he didn't get it done. We were talking about how great Anthony Nelson had stepped up and, and how great Carl Nassib had done when he stepped up. And, and we used that term and, and those compliments as a fact of, well, nobody really expected them to do this well, so they're playing great because we didn't expect to see this out of them. You expect to see this out of Joe, Tra- Joe Tryon Shoyinka, and he didn't step up. So, yeah, I do think that, that Jason Light is right, that this is absolutely a big year for, for Joe Tryon Shoyinka to step up and, and show his ability. I'm not sure I agree with Jason Light so much that, you know, in his confidence – that he will do that. I, I hope to see it. But David, real quick, does the lack of production on the edge without Shaq Barrett make edge rusher now a little bit more of a priority? I mean, there's plenty of priorities on this team along the offensive line. Now running back's a priority. The secondary, both corner and safety are priorities. Where does edge rusher now rank in, in this group where – if you don't have Shaq, you don't have anything in terms of production. Yeah, so I think what we need to do is we need to do a full-blown position-by-position ranking of team need post-combine, and we'll do that at a later episode of Locked On Bucks. But here's what I will tell you. I'm going to actually put defensive end higher than outside linebacker, and I know edge is a fluid term, mm-hmm. but in a 3-4 base defense, you're pretty much talking D-linemen. Like if you're talking about combine, look for D-linemen, right? Not uh linebackers um so i think they need to fix that that position i think will golston is eventually going to need to be replaced and i feel like this is almost like a ray lewis situation where during a stretch of ray lewis's career he actually kind of started to fall off a little bit and there was some conversation about ray lewis like okay maybe his his time is kind of coming maybe the great years of ray lewis are kind of passing and he basically came out and said look i'm an off-ball linebacker i'm you know i'm i'm not on the line of scrimmage I need people on the line of scrimmage to help me out. Like if nobody, if none of our guys on the line of scrimmage have to be worried about that, just frees them up to worry about me. And that's what's happening here. I'm getting everybody else's garbage because they're not eating anything. So what did the Baltimore Ravens do? They drafted Haloti Nada. And you know what happened to Haloti Nada? Haloti Nada said hello to a whole lot of blocks. And Ray Lewis started to eat again. That was what I think is the problem here. This team was missing in Dominican Sue in a huge way. Will Golson has never been a, a premier pass rusher. So he's there to eat some blocks, fill some gaps, stop some runs. That's really what he's kind of there to do, bat some passes down the line of scrimmage. And Dominican Sue had some penetration ability. Vita Vea had some penetration ability. That's what they were missing in 2022. That's what they need to replace is on the defensive line. You do that, that's going to automatically make Joe Trier and Schwenka look better. Shaquille Barrett's going to get better. Now, I do still think you need to approach the edge position. Hello, Andre Carter in the second round or third round. But I don't think it's a higher priority than, say, defensive line. DJ Dale said at uh, you know at his media availability on yeah, Wednesday man. that Vita Veo is one of his favorite players to watch in the NFL and one of his favorite players going back to his Washington days. 
that could be an interesting alignment yes. if that's the direction the Buccaneers go. But the never-ending soap opera of the quarterback position for the Buccaneers was, of course, discussed. And while Kyle Trask is the starter right now, the Bucs are not handing him anything. That is next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. <laughs> Wrapping things up here on the Locked On Bucks podcast and iron sharpens iron. Competition breeds excellence. Kyle Trask is about to battle for his career. That might seem a little extreme, but if Kyle Trask does not win out the quarterback battle in training camp for the Buccaneers, he may never start for a franchise. This is his chance. This is his opportunity, but he has to earn it. Trask does have the head start being a second round pick from just a couple of years ago and sitting behind Brady. But as excited as the Bucs claim to be about him, they aren't shying away from bringing in competition for Trask, so his anointment is far from guaranteed. Jason Light told the media, quote, yeah, we're very excited about Kyle. We're very excited about him getting the opportunity to be the starter. We'd be very comfortable with that. We're excited. I've used that word already, but I really am. For him to get a chance to be with the starters in the offseason, starters in training camp, starters in preseason, which he's never done. He was a successful quarterback in the SEC. I mean, wildly successful. We took him in the second round for a reason. We didn't take him in the second round just to be a third string quarterback. Now it has yet to be seen what he turns out to be, but we're confident that it's going to be very good. You have to give everybody competition. He's the only quarterback on our roster right now. I'm just saying if he were the starter or if he was the only option that we had right now, we'd be very, very excited about going forward with him. And he's going to get the opportunity, no matter who we bring in, to be the starter. Todd Bowles, when he spoke with media, added, or when he was asked if he's ever seen a situation like this one, and Bowles said, I've been here once before. It all depends on who we sign. We'll see, and we will kind of go from there. Again, it's a new system. Everybody is going to have a chance to compete, whether we label them one, two, or three. That may not be the way they start the season. It's a different time for us. We understand we lost the greatest of all time, but whoever we bring in here will have the chance to compete. Kyle will have a chance to compete, and we will see where that goes. End quote. So, David, is this coach speak oh and they're actually going to roll with trask as the starter or do you think that they bring in someone that can le- obviously they're going to bring in people but can they bring in someone that can legitimately compete for the starting job um i mean i look at the part of the quote where we understand we lost the greatest of all time but whoever we bring in here will have a chance to compete kyle will have a chance to compete Kyle's not getting handed anything. What Kyle is getting, I suppose, handed is the opportunity to be the number one quarterback. And I kind of get the feeling like some of the conversations, some of the quotes lean a little bit more sternly that way than others. But I also go back to Dave Canales' comments in his introductory press conference. Kyle's the only quarterback we have, so Kyle's the only quarterback I'm going to talk about. Here's what I'm going to say. This is going to be a little bit of a hot hot take. You're not going to like it. Some other people are not going to like it. If Drew Locke gets signed by the Buccaneers, If it's a true competition, I think Drew Locke wins. I think Drew Locke beats Kyle Trask for the starting job for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If Drew Locke comes in and doesn't get a fair competition, which look, that's that's coaches, you know, that's that's up that's up to Todd Bowles and Dave Canales and Jason Light. And if they want to say it's a competition, and we've all seen this before, where it's a competition, but it's not really a competition. Um, And Kyle Trask gets the job, and this team goes one in four, one in five with a struggling offense. I think you see Drew Locke come in. Some people are going to find it unfair that Kyle Trask is kind of in this situation in his first year, but the bottom line is Kyle Trask is, yes, it's his first year as a starter, rather, but it's his third year in the National Football League. And while he needed some ramp-up time in high school, he needed some ramp-up time in Florida, he got some ramp-up time in the National Football League, but nobody is going to give an NFL quarterback four, five, six years of ramp-up time. Like You've got to make it work, and... Honestly, you go back to Alex Smith and and many quarterbacks before that. Nobody's gonna care that you're you're changing offensive coordinators. Nobody's gonna care if you have six offensive coordinators. Like nobody gave Alex Smith a buy when he had seven offensive coordinators in seven years and didn't turn into uh, the next Joe Montana, right? Like that's the NFL business. You either get the job done or you don't. And if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers end up in a situation where it's like, look, Kyle is kind of showing us like he's not a fit for this offense and this isn't working, 
let's put Drew in there. Now, if Drew doesn't work either, it might be annoying, but you might see a situation where, okay, well, let's go back to Kyle now. Let's see maybe if he's learned his lesson from getting benched, and it'll be annoying. But at the end of the day, a top five pick, Caleb Williams, uh, or, or or another quarterback, uh, it's, his name is blanking right now from, from my brain, the kid from North Carolina is expected to be another top pick uh, next year's NFL draft. Oh, May? Uh, yeah, Drake May. There you go. Thank you. Um, if Drake May or Caleb Williams are available for the Buccaneers in that top five spot, trading up to maybe two or three to do it, they're going to do it. Yeah, like that's that's going to be the end of it. They're going to do it. And then that guy is going to get his two or three years of ramp up, but he's going to do it on the job uh, as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. So that is the situation it is. Whether it's fair or not, I don't know. I can't tell you. But that's that's honestly how I see this fight. But the reason I say I think that Drew Locke would win this game because um, and we've had some comments about this where Drew only spent a year with, you know, Coach Canal. So how big of a year is that really? Well, one, I'll tell you this, Blaine Gabbert only spent one season with Bruce Arians in Arizona. Then there was a gap year. Then he came to Tampa as the veteran knower of the system and the language to try to help Jameis Winston. Now, it didn't end perfectly, but Jameis still had a pretty good year that year, minus the interceptions. Um, so there was some benefit there, right? So that's that's kind of my point there. We've seen this, we've seen this story before where a guy with one year of experience with a coach comes in. Here's the other part that I didn't know before getting to Indianapolis, James. After practice with the Seattle Seahawks, after every practice, Drew Locke and Dave Canales would stay on the practice field. After mm -hmm. practice was over, everybody else was gone, and Dave Canales ran Drew Locke through the entire game plan and all the reps in their game plan. So Drew Locke may not have played for the Seattle Seahawks, but he got every single rep that they ran through that offense for every single game, every single part of the game plan, the entire season. He got prepared like a starter and not just like mentally preparing to start. No, he actually stayed on the field with his passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach and prepared like a starter would for every single game. Dave Canales did that for him. He didn't do it because he thinks he's a scrub. Yeah, uh, I still think he's the most likely vet quarterback that the Buccaneers are going to bring in. But I mm -hmm. will say it is worthy to note that Todd Bowles said that you know, Kyle Trask being on the roster does not preclude them from drafting a quarterback this year. Could it be David's favorite, Anthony Richardson in, uh, no. in the first round uh, if he falls to 19? More than likely, if they're drafting one, I think you're looking at a day three pick. I, I think the ceiling is Hendon Hooker in, in round three if he happens to fall there, uh, oh. which, of course, David and I approve of, of that move. So Kyle Trask, second round pick. Drew Locke, second round pick. Hendon Hooker, second round pick. Figure it out. You got three second rounders. Dave, which one's the guy? It's not going to be Hendon immediately because he's going to be injured. But which one's the guy? And let's let's roll. Let's Bucks country. Let's ride. Yeah. This. Oh no. <laughs> This storyline is not going anywhere. We are going to dive into all the different possibilities, but that will do it for this particular episode of Locked On Bucks. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen Locked On NFL Draft. Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez provide in-depth coverage of the biggest NFL draft prospects with deep dives into the sleepers and hidden gems that can change your favorite NFL franchise. Find Locked On NFL Draft wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We will be back. At some point in the near future, I'm not going to make promises that we can't keep, but David is traveling tomorrow, uh, children, hockey and, and things going on. I'll be back in Indianapolis on Saturday, uh, but we will have more content coming for you sooner rather than later. In the meantime, check out everything David's doing over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out my work over at BucksNation.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks. And if you feel like it, at D Harrison 82 and maybe he'll start tweeting a little bit more. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.